back with um, Unconditional Surrender, World War II in Europe, and after all my talk about the Germans perhaps not invading Russia, we've hit May 1941 and the Germans have just invaded Russia. Ha! <laughs> uh, turns out, well, you know, I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. I thought it would be really interesting not to and see if that was viable and valuable. Um, but first play of the game, World War Two. quite hard to not invade Russia really, isn't it? And when the opportunity's there. Um, so I have gone and, uh, and launched an invasion. Um, it's, I think, considerably harder than than uh, the Germans found it in the summer of 1941 in reality um, because the Russians know it's coming, they can sit back, yes they can give up a few uh, cities and factories that they know they'd lose anyway um, but they can have a defence in depth already organised. They hardly lost any units in, in the opening attack because they were they were far enough away that the Germans couldn't get any attacks in. They had air support, and um, you know it's it's really gone quite comfortably for them. They'll be pushed back, but they've got a kind of depth at the moment. Well, they had a kind of depth that that allowed them not to suffer any real sort of catastrophes or encirclements or anything like that. Um, so. We'll see how it goes. The south is looking quite weak um, down here on the Black Sea. This line is not looking the strongest, um, but they have got numbers, you know, a greater depth up in the north um, and and some units up there to uh, some armies up there. Firstly, watching Moscow and secondly, um, the Finns joined the Germans and with the Swedes also on board. I've got a, a mind for the Axis to, a, to to strategic move round up into this vicinity and see if they can't open up something of an attack up right up in the northern area of Russia up round there. Um, and it might not happen. It might it might take a little while to come together, but but it's certainly something that uh, they'll they'll think about with strategic moves available. Um, so there it is. Um, that's the state of play at the moment. Um, I've realised I've made a, you know, as you do with games like this, um, first playing, there are mistakes that creep in. I don't think any of them, I, well, they've been sort of equal opportunities mistakes. I don't think they've favoured one side or the other. I've, I've been a bit confused at times as to where the weather zones lie. This, this if I zoom in here, this is dotted sort of right through the middle there in the sea you can see a sort of little yellow circles and that that marks um, south of that over here is the desert zone and north of it up to a sort of green line somewhere which I probably can't find on camera there it is running along along the river so that's the warm zone and at various times I've been thinking that that north of that south of that yellow line is is the warm zone instead of north of it, and I, I don't know. I've been very, I've I've had the weather zones a little bit confused because there's four weather zones in the game and only three on the only three on the weather box. So you've got cold, mild, and warm, and uh, sometimes I've just got them mixed up, especially warm and mild and desert. Anyway, at least everyone suffered the same lunacy when I've got it wrong um, so and the other thing is um, I spotted that the 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 cost to take sorties off off convoys is only three and I've been paying four because I thought they were surface units and then I spotted that there there was a separate entry on the chart for convoys so I've been getting that wrong but only by a point and I just think that that's meant the Italians and British have just been paying two or three extra a turn that that uh, that they needn't have for for taking sorties off things, but again, I really don't think it's affected. It might have slowed the um, slowed the Mediterranean war down a little, taken some of the heat out of it, because um, they haven't the 
neither side's been able to 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 um, to reorganise as quickly as they might have done, perhaps. Um, but it's really been marginal. Um, yeah, it's still annoying to get be getting things wrong, but the game's in a a really interesting place, a really interesting position right now. Um, the Germans just going into Russia. The f the Finns and Swedes up in the north. Um, the Turks uh, and Italians locked in a, a bit of a stalemate in the Mediterranean with the British, but the British feeling like they're just teetering on the brink of disaster um, all the time. Um, I think the Italians and Turks certainly have the initiative there, more units, m more economy, m more stable supply lines, um, fewer threats. Um, and that's it. Um, I'll just keep pushing on. Well, midway through the um, midway through the uh, Axis German activation in June, where am I? June forty-one, um, and the Italians have just broken through into across the river into uh, Alexandria. Here, it was only held by that. Um, a weak garrison unit that's now sitting in Cairo. Uh, the Italian um, army uh, gave that British unit another uh, kicking and uh, forced it to retreat again. And thankfully, the well, thankfully for the British, anyway, they had somewhere to go. Pulled back into Cairo. Um, how that unit gets supply? Well, it can. I'm thinking about supply for that unit on British behalf. Um, it may be in low supply and low, unless the British can do something about this. And low supply for a for a understrength unit is minus four in combat, which is pretty much doomed. Um, so the British have now got to. They're facing three armies up here from the Turks, and uh, and a really really difficult situation down here. And that is not looking good uh, at all. Um, things on the other hand up over in Russia where the Germans um, are attempting to attack um, are quite rosy for the Russians still mainly because um, the, the weather really favoured them there was poor weather in that area even though it's June the weather roll came out poor and so they've had a uh, another turn of not f facing too much in the way of German attacks um, and those that those that they have faced haven't gone particularly well for the Germans. Uh, I've got about, oh, I've still got about 19, 20 odd production that the Germans can spend on on attacking in this um, in, uh, the sort of sector north of the the um, the this marsh, this huge marsh. Can't remember what it's called, Pripyat. Yeah, the Pripyat Marsh. Um, so they've still got this area to attack up into, and you can see the there's also Swedes and Finns trying to make some make some ground up right 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 up over there. But um, yeah, uh, the Germans are just going to throw some throw some armor um, into the Russians here and see whether they can force them back a little bit. But it's pretty static on the front line with the Russians at the moment. Um, but it's down here in the Mediterranean that the Axis are really um, grinding uh, and preventing the the British from getting out. Um, really not quite sure um, what to do uh, to help the British out down here, whether it's too late to try and convoy in a, uh, some aircraft or something. Or even another garrison, just another unit, just to hold something down. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, um, so, well, we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see what the British can do. Perhaps they have to pull out of Haifa here, swing that unit back round and try and combat these Italians. But then that's just going to leave the way clear for the Turks to run to uh, it's a really unpleasant situation for the British right now 
Unconditional surrender, uh, World War II in Europe. Um, most of the way through the operations phases for um, August 41, I've still got the, um, the Soviet faction to do, but the uh, Axis and the Western powers have been. And um, the uh, Italian uh, disaster in North Africa has um, happened. Uh, not quite as it did, but um, it has happened. The um, uh, Force H there, the British carrier force in uh, based out of Malta, has been cutting supply um, for a fleet that was in Tunis, um, an Italian fleet that was trying to that was trying to get the um, <coughs> supplies through. Oh, sorry, out of Tripoli. Um, so the Italians had a f had f f a fleet and a uh, a convoy unit in Tripoli that had been supplying all their North African armies, um, and originally a while ago they'd had one in Benghazi as well, but that had had moved over up into Albania to take um, to take units up to recapture Albania from when Yugoslavia captured it from them. So this all started. Um, when our, uh, Yugoslavia entered the war and took Albania, the Italians re reacted after the Germans had had sent panzers through Yugoslavia and captured Belgrade and forced them to surrender. The the Italians um, ferried some troops back out of out of Benghazi over to capture Albania, but then that allowed the British to intercept the only other. F for um, supplies going into North Africa via Tripoli and that dropped the Italians onto low supply and um, and the French North Africans have come out with their army and with some chits from from the Western Allies um, some some friendly forces and some ground support chits and things like that They've been able to duff up that low supply unit, force it back and back and back, and finally take Tripoli. And on the other side, um, this uh, under the low supply there is the other Italian army, which at one time had taken Alexandria. Um, but the the Western Desert Force counterattacked and um, reduced it. And because it's under low supply, it hasn't been able to uh, rebuild itself. And now it's being chased all the way across the desert, all the way around the desert road via Tobruk and um, by the Western Desert Force. Um, and, uh, you know, that unit is reduced, so it's got a minus two for that. It's on low supply, it's got a minus two for that. It's facing a healthy British unit, it's on a plus one. So it has essentially no chance of... Uh, of of surviving combat, and it's just had to run. But the fact that the um, the Fr the Fr um, the French North Africans have just taken the um, the Italians' only working port means now that these two units are pretty much well. I wouldn't say they're doomed because they can supply stay on low supply out of that um, city there, Al Algella, But that's their only source of low supply. And they are going to get, they're just boxed in at the moment with nowhere to go. Um, so it's looking like the um, the Italians have just lost the North African campaign. And I very much doubt the Germans want to get involved right now. They are busy um, wandering through Russia, as is their... Um, want. They've um, broken through several layers of um, Russian defence and in true Russian style there always just seems to be another layer of Russian defence. So they're pushing in towards Kharkov here in August um, and um, and uh, got stopped briefly up in whatever area that is, somewhere up around Minsk or somewhere I think and just in front of Smolensk there, but they will break through again in September and the Russians will fall back again 
but then the winter's going to start setting in and it's going to be interesting to see what happens but but really uh, you know i keep going back to that thought that that the germans really only want to be doing any attacking to the extent that it's helping them not lose they they they're not out they're not in russia for glory uh, they're not in russia to take moscow they're in russia to try and grind factories down and and ruin russian production and then you know try and build up some layered defense to make it harder and harder to take germany back uh, or to 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 conquer germany in return so um uh it's all kind of going according to plan for the for the um for the axis at the moment apart from this north african nightmare which the uh Italians have really um, botched. Anyway, um, August 41, and it's just tremendous how there's... Um, I'm so really enjoying this game. It's, it's, it just throws up constantly interesting situations because even though there's this Italian disaster going on here, um, there's also something of a British disaster going on over over in Egypt and, and by the Suez Canal where where the Turks are, are just putting so much pressure on and maybe the British have stabilised this situation. They have, they've had to ship in the British Expeditionary Force which was sat in London for ages and and they finally plucked up the courage to, to, to ship that in. Um, and, uh, and hope they've got enough money to to pay for supply and pay for the convoys, but we'll see what happens. If it feels like the British here are, in North Africa are constantly teetering on the brink of disaster, and every time they seem to have secured something of some sort of stability, they manage to cock it up. So um, we'll see how it goes this time. Um, back into unconditional surrender. Um, just moving into October 41, uh, you can see the Russian line there um, being squeezed right up towards Moscow, but uh, the Germans haven't uh, haven't advanced as far as they did historically. They're they're still some way from Stalingrad, back off there in the off there in the distance over there. So you can see there they haven't pushed as hard or as far as they did historically, and perhaps I haven't been quite as aggressive with them as I could have been um, but we weren't taking any silly risks we just slowly you know made our way forward where we could we've uh, surrounded some and eliminated some Soviet units along the way um, and we might make some more inroads in that line but the weather has turned um, poor and uh, it's uh, it becomes quite difficult to attack now. Um, up here, this kind of flank attack by the Finns and Swedes hasn't really produced anything. I mean, one good result against that Soviet unit, and uh, this whole line would fall apart um, for the Russians. But at the moment, that one unit is uh, blocking any any sort of supply, supply back out this way and so those those Swedish and Finnish units are having to trace supply up this railroad and then along that road and so on um, and that means that's limiting how far they can push down into northern Russia um, and yeah if no, I don't know. We've just reached a point where you feel things are going to just slow down and the Russians are going to start to rebuild a little bit. Um, over in North Africa, uh, the Mediterranean in North Africa, the Italians have gone. The Italians um, have been wiped out. Um, the, uh, the, the British chased an Italian army all the way around here. And um, and finally caught up and eliminated it. And the French here cornered a unit 
um, uh, the other, the only other Italian army next to Tripoli, and it voluntarily disbanded. It was reduced and then vol um, voluntarily disbanded during the during the supply phase, so as not to cost the Italians any more any more national will. So that's gone. Um, so the only Axis forces currently contesting any sort of North African territory are, are the are the Turks over here near Jerusalem. Um, but of course the British now have in a, they've got uh, that motorised infantry in that garrison but they can now swing um, their other motorised infantry there um, back over back over towards the uh, to the fighting and and it should be interesting we you know three three units against three the British I suppose have maybe have a little bit of an advantage in terms of um, what chits they can throw in they have some tanks and some free forces chits uh, but the um, the the axis can throw um, certainly put ground support tokens in on the on the Turks behalf so uh, they're not entirely without uh, without little mechanisms to give themselves a boost um, and uh, that's the state of play